Good day, my name is Terry Smith and in this video I'll be demonstrating how to add or to join a computer or client machine to your domain. Now I've already set up this machine in terms of already installed Windows but I didn't totally run through the whole configuration process of how we'll be adding it to the domain. For this demonstration I'll be using a Windows 10 machine. Why well, I understand is my most preferable operating system. Besides, I mean, Windows 11 is out, not too proficient in it, but I hope that this could be as beneficial to all as it was to me the first time I did it. So, to start with, when setting up a machine or Windows machine to join a domain, you have to use either the business version or the professional version of the operating system. You can use home, you can use education, or you can use enterprise. So, in doing this setup, You'll have to spend or you'll have to make sure you acquire the correct ISO to do this join. So let's begin. So given the option here, set up for home or personal use, I'll set up my own organization. Being taken to the sign in screen, you can sign either using an email address or Microsoft email address. But because you'll be doing this for a domain, I'll be doing a domain join instead. Here, you will now be asked to create an administrative profile or a local profile for the machine. So this admin profile, I would simply just call admin. Generate a password. And fill out a few security questions. Accept or skip all the privacy and feature based messages. And now that we're on our desktop. So, we have our machine in front of us. We have our domain server behind us. First thing we want to do is that we want to try to ping to see if we can talk to the server. So, Open command prompt or PowerShell, whichever you fancy. And ping for your silver. Now there's a common misconception or common error. And this is because we can't ping for the server because now, because we're in two virtual machines, we have to ensure that we have the right connect to connection so that the server or the computer can reach or talk to the server. So, in order to do this, we'll close the VM, see the machine state, Check to ensure that the server has the right network set up. And the network set up or what you want to be attached to is your host only adapter. 
in advance, make sure that all promiscuous modes are allowed. And it'll be the same thing for your test machine. Now, I'm going to try pinging for the silver one more time. As you can see here, we got a response. Now we get into the nitty gritty of joining the computer to the server. We now assign IPs to the computer. Navigator, the adapter settings. Put the internet properties. Allocate IPv4. And you enter the phone in manual IP addresses. Now, these addresses are addresses that you choose personally. Remember to map your IP addresses out. So, if you have multiple computers and you map multiple addresses, you have a key locating which address is for which computer. Now, when you have a DHCP server or DHCP servers attached to your server, these things will all be automatic. But for now, seeing that we're only running DNS and Active Directory, we have to assign our own IP addresses. Now, we're going to attach IP addresses to the client machine as well as point to the DNS IP address to the server which you would want to use. So, for this machine, I'll use 192.168.0.0. Three, three. Four, get to Now that in the DNS, you have to locate or you have to plug in the server address or the IP address to your DNS server. Now that you have mapped the IP addresses to the client machine and to the DNS server, you can now go to the setup wizard to add the computer to the server. So to do this, you can navigate to control panel. System and security. System. And before we actually add the computer to the server, I strongly advise that you do rename your computer. Because if you are dealing with 10 to 20 to 1000 computers and you don't have a registry or a sequence in which your computers are named, you run into problems because you need to identify which computer is what when it comes to the maintenance or management. So if I should name my computers, I'll go ahead and rename this PC in advance, go to change, and I'll change my computer name. Name this as machine. Now do a quick restart. Stay tuned. Now that the machine is restarted, you see that our computer name has taken effect. 
It says now to add our silver or our client computer to our domain. It is one of two ways. Okay, I do a domain join. But as I'll be demonstrating, I'll be going through the domain join wizard. So back out and we go and use this option network ID. Basically, this is just a next, 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 next normal wizard setup, but I'll be running through it with you step by step. So, first of all, this computer is part of a business network. I use it to connect other computers at the work. Next. My computer uses a network with a domain. We're currently connected to the domain network. So, yes. Here we ask to get information of the following. Your username and a password, your user account domain name, as well as your computer name and your domain name. Here, it asks you to input your username, password, and domain name for your domain. So you can see here we have our computer local user in the input field. I'd like to can change this to our domain name. Or the domain we used on our domain server. The password for that domain user on your domain server. And the name of your domain. Now, they will be asking for the name of the computer as well the domain to which the computer will be joining. So the main name of the computer has already been auto-generated. So now it's just put the name of the domain. Here. Yeah. You'll be asked to enter a username, a password, as well as the domain for the computer. Next. I will be asking to enable a domain user account onto the computer. I'll say yes. This is my domain user, which is part of my domain server, and this is the domain to which it will be joined. I will set my account time to administrator. And it'll ask me to restart to see if all changes made. Now we have successfully rebooted on the login screen. You would see the domain is now attached to the client. Here you would see the domain name as well as the domain administrator profile. But let's put this to the test. I can log in with my domain administrator profile. And I could successfully log in. But what about my other users on my in my Active Directory? Would I be able to log in one of those users? Hmm. Let's navigate to back to my server manager. Now we get to tools, users and computers.
test users. And now I can see a list of users I have pre-configured that's supposed to be part of my domain. Hmm. Let's use user2 as an example. Let's go back to our computer, our Windows 10 client. And sign out. Click on other users, type in user logon name, test dot user two and try that user's password. And we have also successfully logged in. Let's try it one more time. Let's try it to the test using which we created. Other users. Test dot user. And we have successfully signed in using the test user account as well. Let's go back to our server manager. So in server manager, active directory users and computers, if you click on the computers wheel, you'd see a list of machines which have been pre-configured as well as the machine that we've just joined to the domain. This naming convention will take us if it is that we have tens to twenties to hundreds to thousands of computers, it can easily be identified or identifiable because we've changed the computer name to follow a sequence of test machine, test machine 001, test machine 002. Thank you for watching my video, please like and subscribe to my channel.